I would like to give you an account of the pharmacal treatment of sarcomas. This is a small presentation on um, the results of what was um, presented at ASCO Congress, which was a virtual Congress two weeks ago. Now I'm going to select the most interesting uh, aspects discussed there. So accents, uh, we, I'm going to concentrate mainly on the rare forms of uh, soft tissue sarcomas. Next slide. And I will talk in details on about three clinical uh, trials. So the first is second phase with the the, the use of MEK inhibitor of trimetinib and its endothelioid hemangitelioma treatment with amputation. Second is synovial uh, plus myxoid liposarcoma. It is so called spear T te technology. So it's a technology like uh, CAR T cells, was kind of a similar design. I will tell you in more details about that. It is based on hyperexpression of uh, uh, hyperexpression of MHA4 by the tumor in patients with, uh, with HLA2 positive uh, type. And second, so third study is novel sarcoma, use of multi kinase inhibitor. We don't know that in this group, uh, Zopanib uh, works in this uh, patients, and we'll tell in details about all of those. Uh, so to say studies. So, and the last study in uh, rare morphological subtypes, you see uh, inflammatory fibrillistic tumor, they studied carizotinib, 19 patients were enrolled. The uh, objective response rate is shown further. Some of them were ELK positive, as, as other part, some part ELK negative. But it is a small sample size it's, uh, there is a purpose of Global Sarcoma Network to collect and study this data from all over the world, from different clinics, uh, so to reach uh, more than 100 um, patients, uh, then it could be published. Next is clear cell sarcoma, 34 patients, they used uh, crizotinib. The objective response rate, uh, let's say, is uh, rather, so to say, Arbitrary, so say one of 26, and then epithelial sarcoma, doesn't matter state, 62 patients with a response rate of 15%. Alveolar soft parts of coma, with, uh, treated with sidiranib, 48 patients uh, with effectiveness, uh, which is kind of a mediocre. Uh, 83% versus placebo, effective placebo. Uh, possible was were 13, more than 13 percent, when I was a part of those patients have rather long disease scores, so this tumor is rather indolent, so it's hard to assess if the treatment actually affected the results. Then uh, solitary fibrous tumor, uh, this study has been published when we collected all those patients all together, and in ESMO. We published uh, the position paper where we described all clinical uh, observations regarding various chemo and uh, target therapy modes for solitary fibrous tumors and angiosarcoma in different variations. They all aim to break uh, uh, growth factor. So we uh, need to look at all these uh, trials um, of. So the median of relapse-free survival fluctuates within three months period. So epithelioid hemango, uh, epithelioma is quite rare. It's uh, relatively uh, rare, and uh, it can be indolent. Uh, so it, uh, it's uh, or extremely aggressive. So it is characterized with variable clinical behavior. It depends on biology, and morphologists, I suppose, will comment much. Uh, better on that, what they see, and how these tumors are different from one another. In, 
number of observations that they do uh, have for a certain period of um, time. And uh, so what have we experimented with? A bit of a zoom up. Uh, this is uh, a long-term story. The median progression of progression-free survival is nine months. Then uh, that was, uh, we started from the beginning of the uh, 2000, then Severolimus, uh, Paclitaxel, uh, uh, Azitinib, and Interferon. The efficacy were achieved in Acerolimus. This is mTOR inhibitors by our Italian colleagues. And that was the study which also verified uh, with the uh, translocation status uh, CARTE-1. And at the moment, this is the most effective option in terms of the long-term results. So this uh, new MAC inhibitor, as a matter of fact, uh, if you look at the previous slide, uh, then the uh, progression-free survival accounted for uh, 8.2 months, which actually uh, is much better than all the terrorism kinase inhibitors, but, and the um, number of relapses was not uh, above 7%, or response rate, excuse me. This is a target direction. What we can think about uh, when we uh, speak about different morphological subtypes, uh, because there is certain stagnation when it comes to cytostatic as well as the target therapy. Now, these two uh, study, uh, th these two um, morphological uh, subtypes uh, were looked in um, at this study, and. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, observation study, meta-analysis. Synovial uh, liposarcoma has a response rate of 29% uh, and uh, 3.6 uh, months is relapse-free survival. If compared to others where the uh, response rate is twice as low as well as the uh, relapse-free survival. So the patients before that received uh, first line of treatment. This is the Exclu uh, exclusion inclusion criteria. It was done by the National Cancer Institute uh, that was handled by Old uh, at that uh, time. Uh, he worked on the hyperexpression of, uh, as well as the uh, 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 MHA uh, expression, as well as the HLA A2, and which demonstrated the efficacy in synovial sarcoma. These were the main uh, inclusion conditions. They, they uh, needed to be treated by uh, atrescoglite uh, or isophosphamine previously. And this is the study design. Uh, first, you can see the screening of HLA. Then further on, they, uh, they screened uh, for MAGE A4. If the patient is eligible, then there was a therapy with, uh, with alkylates uh, up to full cytopenia, and then it was spear T cell infusion. And later on, there was an observation or follow up period following certain uh, regimen. Here, you can see the population of objective response. Objective response is uh, 13 out of 33 patients, 39%. 40, in 41%, we, uh, they observed synovial sarcoma. And in myxoid liposarcoma, 25%. Uh, and uh, tumor control was 85%, uh, or disease control was 85%, which is very promising, especially taking into account the technology. Cytokine storm was marked in a number of patients with low uh, degree, and Tempra was used in a couple of cases, which is actively used nowadays for patients with COVID-19. Therese kinase inhibitors and treatment of uh, soft tissue sarcomas without any morphological subtypes um, taken into account. I would like to draw your attention here to the progression-free survival, 
which fluctuates between two months up to 7.9 months. According to this study, the median is five months. This is an option for today. And uh, this means that this is within half a year. Every patient of over 50%, there will be progression in them. And also another interesting data, which was shown here, uh, the third phase of amlotinib. This is another inhibitor. A classical uh, comparator was selected, which was used uh, in trabectidin, a uh, third phase study. This is the carbazin, a uh, low efficient uh, drug, and uh, it's even lower in synovial sarcoma. So the patients were on previous treatment with the mesonib and uh, in one fourth of cases. And now uh, this is quite a well expected result. There was an, uh, of course, uh, superiority of anlatinib versus the carbazib. And uh, then whether this is going to, uh, after that, they took a decision uh, on including this uh, 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 medication into the uh, treatment regimen. Now they received a good survival medians. Now here, PFS uh, with uh, with months, you can see anlotinib uh, 48 percent, uh, 27 percent, and the carbazin 4 percent in 12 months. So, results of a prospective randomized trial, patients do have benefit from anlotinib treatment. It is quite well tolerated. It can be used in combination. This is uh, a question for further studies. The, car the carbazin has minimal activity in synovial sarcoma, and uh, partially the patients were um, pre-treated by um, equivalent of bazapanib. So that's actually a question about anlatinib. Uh, I suppose the long-term results are still needed. Another interesting trial in uh, myosarcoma of the uterine. This is tamazolamib and lapamib. We should remember that telazamib and the carbazin, these are the same group of uh, drugs. Lysacoma of the uterine, this is 1-2% of all the uterine malignancies. Most common LMS site is, uh, usually it's uh, doxorubicin and uh, gemcitabine plus uh, doxetaxel uh, up front, and then uh, you can see the further regimen. Uh, trabectidine uh, for four months and uh, the carbazine 1.5 months. Further on, the use of uh, drugs and the deficiency of this uh, of um, a good combination. Also, we are very impatient in uh, waiting for this new data when we have certain understanding on what is the percentage of patients with uh, uh, with uh, impairment of homology, uh, homologous recombination or deficiency of it. So in most of the patients, this is uh, every tenth of the patients, they can be screened for the deficiency of homologous uh, recombination. And this is an application off-label. Uh, most probably inhibitors are, can be used here. This is a single arm phase two study. I'm not going to speak about it in details. 24 patients are enrolled. 22 of them are um, available. Um, the, me the median age is 55. 59% uh, uh, had three prior lines of treatment. Toxicities, you can see here. Now, uh, response rate, full response, zero and 27% uh, partial response and 41% st stable uh, disease, which makes 68% uh, of response with a follow-up median of almost seven months. So let's sum up the previous slides. Uh, it, uh, it's becoming really interesting. Uh, 
uh, to screen uh, sarcomas for the deficiency of homologous homology, uh, recombination. But once again, I would like to say that all this is off-label for now. And the armory of treating this, uh, this sarcomas of the soft tissue is not big. And for many patients, when we don't have anything in reserve, from different lines of therapy in patients, still uh, they want to be on treatment. So, and uh, my final slide is where exactly, the, the, where is the place for immune therapy of a soft tissue sarcoma? This is the picture that shows it quite clearly. And all of us here, we uh, look pretty much uh, this way. So it, it says pull, but we keep pushing it. This slide is quite promising, releasing the brakes. But as a matter of fact, uh, there were several, uh, several trials. Uh, SARC uh, point 38 in the frameworks of uh, sarcomas. Now you can see here the outcomes, and the next slide will show the biggest efficacy in alveolar uh, soft tissue sarcoma, and here we have a big question and many comments. When the first data arrived about the efficacy of monotherapy with pemalizumab in alveolar uh, soft tissue sarcoma, some experts said that it's related to indolent nature of this tumor. And there are certain remission fa phases. Um, and, uh, and it doesn't progress into disseminated metastatic process. There are wave-like metastatic lesions uh, that occur sometimes. But nonetheless, you can see at the one year survival of 85%. Then further interesting results were received in Cardoma. This is another uh, in, indolent type of uh, sarcoma. And uh, this is actually uh, something that we have lots of questions about. But most probably, with time, we shall receive better data. Thank you very much for uh, your time, for listening to me. I would like to uh, use this opportunity to tell you about what we have done. This is. Uh, proposal for chemotherapists with quite big sections uh, devoted to different nosologies, including soft tissue sarcomas, why uh, we have created that. We uh, made this just uh, for your better understanding of different chemotherapy regimens and uh, about the efficacy and long-term results for the doctor to take decision. Uh, just uh, and uh, base this decision about the efficacy parameters of this or that regimen. That is why here we have great number of different chemotherapeutic uh, just applications, and uh, we also have hyperlinks to different scientific data. This is only about academic data. You can download it. It is absolutely free of charge for the medical community. And I hope that this will be a really interesting instrument. Thank you very much.